everyone and welcome back into my craft room and here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. As many of you know, and from the products that I have in front of me, I am a Stamping Up demonstrator, independent, uh, and what that means is uh, I sell their products, but I work for myself. So um, I do encourage you, if you're not currently working with a demonstrator and you're interested in any of the products you see me use, then we have some beauty I mean, absolutely gorgeous products. Look at this. This was made from this stamp and die set, the flower cart. And I love the way it turned out. I did some layering. I did some paper piecing. And I did some st lots of stamping. This was a fun card to make. And I thought what we would do, this was a prototype. So, of course, I've got some little boo-boos here and there. But we're going to remake this today and we're going to use a different color palette. And I'm hoping it's going to be equally as pretty uh, in its own right. So let's go ahead and get started. It's it's going to take on sort of something like this, but a little maybe a little different. And what I'm going to do is bring in a whole sheet of Misty Moonlight. Now we're going to need to cut this down into our card base. So let me bring up my paper trimmer. And let's lay this right in camera view. And I'm going to lay my paper in on the 11 inch side and line it up to the five and a half inch mark and move that score blade out of my way. And I'm going to cut that. Then I'm going to turn this and I'm going to go ahead and score it at four and a quarter on the eight and a half inch side. And this will give me my typical A2 size card. Now, you can do it the other way. If your piece of paper is like this, you can cut it on four and a quarter this way and then score it at five and a half and have a top opening card. This is going to be a, this is going to be top opening, but it's because we're going to turn the paper. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and, and line this up at four and one fourth. Move that cut blade out of my way and then score it. Now this is ready to fold into a card base. And see what I mean about it opening a um, certain way? We can, let me go ahead and burnish that before we go any further. I like to line up my top and bottom and hold it. And then make sure that I give that crease line a nice burnish. Just like that. So that my card lays down really well. And there is our card base. Now a portrait style card would open like this. And a landscape will open like this. And we're going to do landscape today because if you notice, my um, my little card here was a landscape. Now, I hadn't done anything on the inside yet. I just kind of built the outside as my prototype. So I'd be ready to bring this to you. So what we're going to do now, we need some designer series paper to go on the front of this. And I went into my Le Shop. Uh, which is in the annual catalog, and I pulled out, oh, there's not the piece. This was not the piece. Well, let me find the piece that I was looking at. I thought I pulled it out, but evidently I didn't. Um, this is such a pretty piece, a pack of paper, too. This is the piece I wanted. And I wanted to get um, some of these little shops that look like they're in the background. And I think that is going to play very well. So I don't think we're going to do the two pieces. And it's just going to show you a little bit of difference in doing the different card style. It's going to be very similar, but yet a little bit different. So what I want to do is I want to take my card base and kind of figure out what where do I want my piece to come from. And I'm thinking I want it to be, I want that to be in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my card here, and I'm going to take a pencil, and I'm just going to draw a little line at the top corner, and then one right down here at the bottom. Now, I know I want to come in a quarter of an inch from that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my trusty trimmer again. And I'm going to turn it this way first. And let's put it in this way. I think we can see better if we do it this way. I'm going to line that up, but I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch from my cut line. That's where my cut line is going to be. So I'm going to come over 
about that far. That's going to put that on the four inch line, which is going to be pretty much perfect. So let's go ahead and slice that. Now that we have that sliced off, we can turn it. And this is one of those things of working with dimensional paper that you're always going to deal with. I'm going to put that pencil line on the quarter inch to my left. When I cut that, that's going to make that quarter inch less than what I had measured, which should be perfect. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to come a quarter inch to the right and line everything up nice and straight and give that a slice. Now, hopefully, if we got everything cut properly, and we are about to find out, let's bring this over. And let's see, that is just about perfect. So that's exactly what I was looking for. I wanted that little storefront to be showcased, and we are gonna put a flower cart in front of this little store. I think it'd be so cute and it looks like we've got something in the background. So if you noticed in this one, I use the uh, Be Mine designer series paper and I use the backside with the florals and the plaid. And I cut uh, a two and a half inch piece for the top and a two and a half inch piece at the bottom. I lapped them over and then I cut a piece of red, real red, quarter inch and ran it over the seam to kind of cover up that seam. And then I built everything with my basket right here. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to come in with our Misty Moonlight. Let's do our white first. I think our white piece needs to uh, showcase first. So let me grab, I thought I had a scrap over here. Okay, let me grab a piece of basic white thick. I want to use the thick for this. Okay, everybody, I'm back, and that was a perfect example of what not to do. <laughs> I had a cup of tea sitting here, and when I got up to reach into my bin to get my piece of white cardstock, my phone was in my pocket. It hit some stamps and dimensionals and some things that were stacked on my desk. It hit my cup of tea, and as you saw, my entire cup of tea went splattering across my desk. Okay. The only thing that I lost was actually the card base. So this, I think we can still use. It look, it, it really didn't get wet. A little bit of tea right there, but I don't think it's noticeable. So I'm going to, I'm going to use it. I think we can get by with using that. Then I thought about what if I used, what if I use this? I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with this. I think this is going to work. I might even trim that down a little bit because what I wanted to do, I want a white mat to go around this the card base. So let's go ahead and score this again. Well, score this new piece again. So we're going to line this up at four and a quarter. You know, my husband tells me all the time, you should never have a drink on your desk. And I know that. But a lot of times when you're crafting, you like to have your, your cup close by, and uh, it, things like that happen. This is like the third time I've had it. I have my computer, which is right here in front of me, and I actually bought a stand that keeps it up off of the desk so that if I have a mishap, my computer at least is saved. Um, all of my stamp blocks were covered. I had to wipe everything down, so... <laughs> It took me a minute to get back, but we are back and in business, and hopefully we won't have any more of those little dreaded accidents. Things happen, right? Um, of course, now I've lost everything. Where is my bone folder? In the process of cleaning, and I'm still finding tea on things. Isn't that crazy? Um, and I know I got a, I know my bone folder's here. I might have put it in the drawer. I did. I took a lot of things and just threw them in the drawer just to get that wasn't wet so that I could get them out of my way. So I'm going to line that up again, just like that. Make sure everything is lined up perfect or as perfect as we can get it. And then let's give it a crease. 
went a little bit, I did a bit off skew right there, but you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna make our paper do what we want it to do. You know, you can trim the paper. So there we go. Now, let's get back to this. So what I wanna do is I think I wanna cut a little bit more off of the top right there. And I'm gonna, I want this piece to be like three, three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Maybe I'll take, maybe I'll take an eighth off here and an eighth off of the bottom. Just to kind of um, not cut the top off of my building. And then I can do an eighth right here. Yeah, not even quite an eighth. What I did is I lined that up to three and three fourths and I'm just slicing off whatever was left. Now this way I want it to be five. And I think I can take that all off of this one. Well, you know what? It is five. So this is this is perfect. So now I need a piece of white cardstock. And I need this piece to be four. About five and a fourth. And what we're going to do, we're going to frame this and I think it's going to look beautiful with that white on the background. See how that just pulls everything out and then when we lay it on here it's even going to be more pretty. Prettier. <laughs> more pretty. Um, but I like that. I like that look. It's just everything kind of frames. So that is ready to go. Now we need to do our focal point and for my focal point I want this piece to be you know, I bent this piece of cardstock in the process of um, getting my, my tea and everything. Let me measure this other piece and see. This is three and a half. I think I'm going to do it three. Now I need it to be three and a half. So we're going to do three and a half by. Uh, Two and three fourths. Three and a half for three and th by two and three fourths. So there's my two and three fourths. And we're going to turn it. And this is going to be three and a half. And this is where we're going to stamp our our little um our flower cart, but I do need another piece of misty moonlight because I want to frame that with the misty moonlight. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to look in my scraps and see if I have a piece. And I do. So anytime I can use a scrap, I always do. So this is three and three four, so I need it to be three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths. By nope, that wasn't right. I need that to be yeah, three and seven eighths by y'all. I just got myself all miscombobulated. So this piece is three and a half. So I want this to be three and five eighths. Not three and five eighths, I'm sorry. Yeah, three and three and three eighths. I'm sorry, three and three eighths that way. And then this one is three and three fourths. So I need it to be two and seven eighths. And hopefully if I did my math correct, that will line up and give us that tiny little elegant border. And it does. Thank goodness. 
It was just, um, you know, we all have those days, and this has definitely been one of those for me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some ink out, and we're going to do some stamping. So I'm going to choose the Misty Moonlight, um, because I'm going to make my flower cart that color. So this is my Misty Moonlight, and out of that stamp set, I want to I want to stamp my wheel first. So my wheel, I'm going to do it in Versafine because, and this is not a stamping up product, but I do have this listed over in my um, my online, my crafting favorites. And this is a great pigment ink. So you can't alcohol blend with it, but it's great for stamping uh, solid images or anything like that that you're not going to use alcohol markers on. So we're going to stamp this right here at the bottom, like that. What this ink does, it gives you a really deep, dark, black, rich color. And that's why I prefer it when I'm doing anything that's solid and I don't have to use alcohol markers. So we can move that out of our way. Then we need our little um, our cart itself, and that's this piece here. And this is what I'm going to use for the Misty Moonlight. So I'm going to ink this up. And then to line this up, what you want to do is bring the edge of this piece right to the edge of that half wheel. And then rest it on that little prop that's there. Just like this. Give it a good stamp. And there is your cart in your misty moonlight. Now that's going to dry lighter. As soon as it starts drying, that is going to lighten up. Right now it looks like night of navy, but it will it will definitely uh, change in a few minutes. So I'm going to grab a piece of scrap white, and the next thing I want to do is I well before we go any further, let me go ahead and stamp my little awning cover, and we're going to do that in misty moonlight. And you want to line it up so that it's just over top that this peak and this peak are just touching the top of the cart itself. We're going to do that in Misty Moonlight as well. This is such a pretty stamp set. So I'm going to get, I hope my head's not in the camera, but I need to get over top of this so I can see exactly where I'm sitting it. So pretty. Look how cute that is. It didn't stamp quite as dark as I would like it. And if I had put this in a, a stamp position, I could have went back and stamped. But you know what? We're going to go with it. Maybe the maybe this is getting a little weathered. We'll, we'll go with that. So now we need to do our flowers. So, and this is what's so much fun. I am going to use a garden green for the greenery. And this is your greenery. So I'm going to load that up with some um, garden green. And this is my garden green. And you know that it's going in the right direction. So when the three leaves down here at the bottom are facing you. So ink it up. And then I am going to stamp right about here. Give that a good press to make sure that it transfers to the paper. There's our leaves. It doesn't look like too much with just the leaves on it, but we're gonna we're gonna pretty it up with the flowers. Here are the flower stamps. And you can see they fit perfectly inside of the flowers. I mean inside the greenery. So if you line up the ones right there in the middle, Everything else should line up perfectly. So what you want to do is look to line those up. Like that. And everything should get lined up. But we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, Stamping Up during celebration ordered the, um, actually brought in the core color stamp and write markers. This was a full set of markers in all of the new core colors. And they actually, because they ran out of some of the Stamping Up products, this was a free gift. And uh, I was able to grab a set of these, which was great because I didn't have them. And they are absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to use the Berry Burst 
and the berry burst, the blueberry bushel, and I want a yellow one. Here we go, the lemon lolly. And we're gonna color our, you can't do this with your alcohol blends, but you can with your Stampin' Right. Sorry. That's why I like to have a drink. I get really dry when I'm talking and sometimes I need a sip of drink. But anyway, we're gonna do these and I'm gonna do the blueberry bushel on these little spriggy pieces that almost look like lavender. And I think they'll be so pretty in the blue. Look how pretty those are. Now you wanna move kind of fast when you're doing these. I'm gonna do the roses in the middle, this beautiful yellow. Just like that. And then I'm going to take the um, blueberry, oh, that was blueberry bushel. I'm going to use the berry burst. Yeah, berry burst over here on these flowers. And just use the side of your, your marker, your brush tip. I got something on there, a piece of lint or something that is wanting to create chaos, and we're not going to have it. All right, you just go over those like that. And close up your marker. I'm going to hop on this. And then I'm going to line it up over top of my position and in. And I'm going to let that transfer just for a minute so that ink got all transfers to the paper and look at the beauty of our flowers. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? So now we can cut those out because we have a die. In the flower cart die, we have lots of dies and we have the one that will cut out our flowers. You can also build your basket. Uh, you, there's so many different things that you can do with these dies. Uh, you can build an entire um, cart using just the dies. So I'm going to lay this over here and I'm going to run it up as best as I can. I'm going to grab a post-it flag and I'm going to flag it down. And let's grab our little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I love this one because it fits on my desk. I can bring it up and I can actually die cut right, in, right here with y'all. Makes it so easy. I did finally have to change my plate. I don't know if anybody saw my last video where I used this and I, my plate had cracked in half. So that happens. I had gotten a lot of wear out of that plate. So I'm going to put stagger my plates, one toward me and one away from me. And then we are going to crank this through. And you can see that this has already started to fade. It's not as dark as it was. That's the beauty of the, the inks. Once they start to dry, you get, um, they lighten in color. So anytime you stamp something and you think it's too dark, just give it a few minutes and you'll be, you'll be surprised. It will, um, it will definitely lighten up. So now we can take those flowers and I want them to hang off of the cart just a little bit so we can see the top, just like that. And I think for this, I'm just gonna use some liquid glue on the back. So a little squiggle of glue. And then I'm gonna set those down like that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I think it's so cute. Now all we have to do is put this I'm going to go around the edge of this because when you cut your paper, you know how sometimes you get that little lip that sticks up? If you go over that with your bone folder, it will lay it down. And I like to do that because I don't like that little raised bulk edge. I think it takes away from your card. I'm going to use blue on the back of this as well. Just 
just like that. And we are going to lay this in. Something like that. Isn't that pretty? Now let's bring our other piece back over. And let's lay this down here. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead. I want to use some stamp and seal on this. And the reason I'm using stamp and seal is because I want um I want this to lay flat. And where it did get a little bit wet, it's wanting to curl and buckle. So the stamp and seal will ensure that everything is going to lay nice and flat. So I'm just going to go all the way around the edges. And a little piece in the middle, like so. And I'm going to bring that over to about like that and then press it down. Now we can go ahead, if you want to, we can put this on here and then we're ready to go ahead and build our little cart right there. We're going to do a little sign over here. So let me grab my little sign. And it is right here. And I want to stamp it on a piece of white. And I've got this piece that I did the um, the flowers on. So we can stamp that right there. And I'm wondering if I want to do that in black. I think I'm going to do it in black. I'm going to go back to my Versafine. Okay. That's going to look really nice. And then on the inside of that, it's going to say... Happy hello, and I'm going to do that in the Misty Moonlight. A happy hello, isn't that cute? So we can grab our little da for our sun. Love it, love it, love it, love it when I have dies that cuts out all the pieces. Makes it so easy. So I'm going to put that over there. And we're going to bring up the stamp and cut and emboss machine again. My little mini. Let's load our plates on. One back. This is the way I sandwich. One back. Then my piece. And then one forward. And run it through. And there is our little sign that we can hook right to the edge of that. And it will look like that little sign is sticking. Maybe we could do it like this. I think I like it like that. I do. I think, I, let me show y'all what I'm doing. Let me move some of this stuff out of my way. Trying to decide if I want this on this side. You know what, let's go ahead and stick this where it belongs and then we can decide what else we want to do. But we're going to go ahead and do this. I got glue in my hand. <laughs> Press that down really good. I like to go over it with my phone folder. Now, I think I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I think I'm going to do it like this. I love the fact that shop is showing back there. And I am going to bring this up. I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. So let me grab my dimensionals. And I will list the um, items that I use for both this card and the other one and the dimensionals for both of them. So look for card one and card two. Card one will be the um, one will be the red one. 
and card two will be the one that I'm making on King R. That way, if you like the red one better, you'll have the dimensions for it, as well as the, the one that I did in the Misty Moonlight. So let's pull these off. So, and then let's put this down right about there. I'm trying to decide if I want to put that up like that or if I want to keep it over to this side. I'm thinking I'm going to put it over to this side. What do y'all think? Do you like it better? And I know you can't tell me because this is a recorded video. Like that? I wanted that door to show, so I'm going to put it over here. But I am going to pop it up, so I'm going to use two dimensionals. And I'm going to put one here and one here. And let's set it right about there. Now, I want to do something up here at the top, maybe a banner or something. And I love this. It says, I love how our friendship has grown. I used that on the other one, and I did it in a cloud because this one looked like the cart could have been outside with some flowers blooming and a beautiful yellow sunny sky. But this one, I'm not sure what I want to put that on yet. So let's look. I'm going to go through my dies and see if I see anything that kind of jumps out at me. You know, trying to find a die sometimes can be the hardest thing to do when you're looking for just the right thing to put a sentiment in. Um, it can be, how about Enduring Beauty? That is a pretty one. What fit? Yeah, we can make that work. So I'm going to do this one in white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my sentiment in the Misty Moonlight. I'm going to bring it down here to the bottom, maybe right about here. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And then we're going to cut it out using this particular die. I'm going to put a post-it flag right there, and I'm going to cut this off. The reason I like to cut, cut it off, I don't want to push the whole thing through my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and this way it will go through my little one. And I can do that right here on the desk, and I don't have to pull out the big machine. Although, y'all know I love my big machine. Always say, if you can only afford one die cut machine, get the big one, because you will not regret it. It is without a doubt, the best hand crank um, stamp and cut and emboss machine that I have ever used. And I've been doing this for quite some time and I have used a lot of die cut machines, but it is without a doubt, not because I sell it, I would use that machine even if I didn't sell stamping up, it's that good. So I'm gonna reposition that because I think it wiggled a little bit. In fact, I know it did. It needs to come this way a little bit. And here. Now we can put that back on here. Put that over it and crank it through. And for anyone that has, is helping me get my channel to grow, I'm giving away a brand new uh, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine when I reach 5,000 subscribers. So we only need maybe a thousand and some more, less than two, and we will be there. So uh, if you would share my video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, all of that helps algorithms and it helps the people at Stamping Up know that people like my videos and that's always important. We're going to pop that up. And I'm wondering if I want to put it
I think I want it right there. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue here, and then I'm going to put dimensionals on the rest of it. And I'm going to leave this in white. I'm not going to edge it or anything because I think it's going to be beautiful with that backdrop of the balmy blue. So I'm going to set that right about here and let everything fall over like that. Isn't that beautiful? I love the way this turned out. I love this flower cart stamp set. So all we need to do now is put a center, or put an inside in. So I'm going to cut this down to four by five and a quarter. Standard size mat. So, oops, that's not straight. Four, five, five and a quarter. And if you wanted to, you could also um, map the inside. If you wanted to do a balmy blue or something else inside, you could do that. Um, totally up to you. Let's see if we can find another stamp to see. Have a lovely day. That would be that would be absolutely beautiful. Let's do that. Let's put oh, and you know what else I wanted to do? I wanted to put some pebbles, like a little pebble path underneath my cart. I wonder if we can do that and not make a mess. I want to use my pebble path. What's better than pebble path color for your pebble path? <laughs> oh, late on words. Oh, that's not the right color. Here we go. This is my pebble path. I wish I had thought to do this before I glued everything together, but let's hope we can make it work. I'm going to use this little stamp block that fits it beautifully. And let's ink and stamp and stamp. And stamp. Oh, I love it. That gives you something that makes it look like, I'm going to do it on this one too. It looks like the uh, cart is actually sitting on a little bit of gravel. I love it. That's like a little finishing touch for me. I think I just about used every stamp set that was in here. I still got a few, but not many. <laughs> And I'm going to come back and do some more with this particular uh, stamp and die set because I think it's beautiful. So let's go ahead and stamp the inside with Have a Lovely Day. And you know what? I think we can do both of those. Have a Lovely Day. We'll do this one in Roll Red and we'll do this one in Misty Moonlight. And let's let's do one more thing. Just because we can, let's do the flowers in the flower pot in the corner. Wouldn't that be cute? So I'm going to do a flower pot right here. Yeah, I'm, I don't know when to stop, do I? <laughs> I'm going to do this on the with the pebble path. So cute. And then let's do let's do the greenery. And we'll grab our garden green. Just like that. And then we need one more little stamp block. Do I have another little one? I think I got all of my little ones out here. It's okay, we could do it with this one. Let's see which way my flowers need to go in here. I think like that. So we're gonna 
pick that up and let's do that in Mr. Moonlight. Think like that. Yeah, once I got the ink on it, I was able to see which way they went. Okay, that's done. So let's do this now. So I'm going to pick this one up and then ink it. Let's ink that again. Have a lovely day. Isn't that so pretty? So we are ready now. Put this inside. So I'm just going to take some liquid glue. Run it around. And then we'll set that in like this. Give it a good press. And there is our good cards. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but I'll do it off camera. But I love the way these turned out. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, a little different, but yet very much the same with the technique that I used and the way I stamped everything. And I really love using that Le Shop, um uh, designer series paper and it's one I haven't really used that much but it is so stinking cute and it'd be so cute using it with this particular stamp set. I hope you've enjoyed my video and my mishap and all the things that happened during this video. It's been fun. I love you guys so much. I thank you each and every one of you for supporting my channel, supporting my stamping up business and I just send out love and hugs to all of you. Um, take care of yourself. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Savior. He is worthy. Remember, Jesus paid it all. So let's live our life for him. Love you. And until next time, bye-bye.